Hi guys, my name's Adele Onyango and welcome to another episode of Legally Clueless. No, seriously, I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. Hi guys, welcome to another episode. It's another Monday that I'm in a really good mood because I finally made a decision that took me all of three years. <laughs> Is it three years? 2016, 2017, 2018, wow, 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 four years. It took me four years to make the decision to leave a radio station I'd been working at for seven years, and that's Kiss FM. So I quit on Friday. Okay, no, that's a lie, because I. it's such a long story. <laughs> and I don't know which of my former bosses is listening to this. But I resigned in December. December 27th, I resigned. I wanted to start the new year on a clean slate. This is the year I turned 30, and 30 is the year you do things that you're scared of. But, of course, I had to serve my notice, which was three months. So January, February, March, I was serving my notice, in between which I renegotiated my contract to make it a bit more exciting. Because I think after nine years in radio, two of which were at 1FM, seven word kiss fm i just felt man i can't be doing the same thing like i needed a change um i wanted to have more impact in community in working with women and youth i wanted to have more fun because the job wasn't as challenging or fun to me anymore i guess because i'd done it for so long yeah and i wanted to be able to start building something for myself and just daring to try so, um, yeah, I renegotiated my contract to try and bring back the fun, bring back the impact. I, I wanted to feel a bit more fulfilled um, and that didn't work out. So, <laughs> um, obviously, this is a long story in there that I don't want to share. But, um, yeah, so that didn't work out. Well, I tried it for two months from april april may yeah i tried it for two months i felt like it wasn't progressing as fast as i wanted to and i was very aware that's not my company or my mother's company so there's some decisions that i can't make yeah so on friday i opted to resign and go with my initial plan so (laughs) that doesn't mean you get an episode every day no still an episode a week thing but yeah um how did i feel after resigning uh also guys it had been four years (laughs) so i feel like i had made peace with the decision i mean over the four years like a kid was born when i was first thinking of resigning and they're four years old now. Wow, 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 wow. But you know what? I don't regret all that time. I saved. I tried to figure out what my next phase is going to look like. But of course, life just does its thing. And I became at peace with my decision. I think that's really important. So my feelings afterwards were relief, calm. I was happy. Um, the only pinch of sadness that I had was that I feel like because I was in this structured system for nine years, I had lost that 20, 21-year-old that I was, who was so spontaneous, who just used to create shit um, and put it out there, who didn't second-guess herself. And I felt a bit of sadness because of that. I felt like, ooh, she would have resigned in 2016, right? Right. But I guess life just is what it is. And we make certain decisions and we just kind of have to live with it. But yeah, that was the only like tinge of sadness, which I think is a bit being a bit unfair on myself. Because, yeah, I enjoyed the last nine years. They weren't bad. They weren't bad. I know I should say I feel sad that I wouldn't interact with my listeners. But there's social media and there's this podcast. So if you were listening to my radio show and you have an internet connection then you can listen to my podcast <laughs> and we can interact. However, um, away from all of that, I will be giving you more details on what I'm going to get up to. I have something so fun and something I'm so proud of that I'm going to be... What? There's so many motorcycles. I'm never home at this time, so... 
<laughs> I never know. I just gonna let it pass and it's gone. Um, yeah, so I have something that I'm working on that I'm really excited about and that you can actually attend. Well, if you're in Nairobi, and I'm going to be making that announcement later this week. So I'm I'm super excited about the various projects that I want to do. And I'm also super excited to just live. I, because of my job, haven't had enough time to be able to constantly hang out with my family or to do things with my husband, go out of town, experience things. I think it's a uh, time for me to kind of like redefine what my life is going to be. So I'm super excited about it. And to everybody who sent me so many positive vibes online, my God, I was so shocked that everybody understands about wanting more in life and positive vibes. It's so amazing. Like what? The internet has matured. But um, yeah, so to all the positive vibes, I was really, really, really um, humbled by them. I will, no, I can't respond to everyone. I was going to lie and say I'll respond to everyone, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be able to respond to all of them. However, I have a fantastic 100 African story on this episode. So I hang out with a girl called Max. And funny enough, this was not planned, guys. This is not planned. Her story is all about leaving a job. <laughs> and Hazis is very interesting because she's leaving a job that she, you know, really took care of their employees, paid well, but she wanted more. She wanted more skills. And how does that then influence her personal identity and how is that journey of you know leaving a job dealing with your family members because you know they can be rough when you're unemployed dealing with relationships going on dates and friends as well i mean she brought up so many pointers that i was just like oh my god i hope this doesn't happen to me but no she brought up pointers that were so real this is definitely one of my favorite 100 African stories. 100 African stories. There is no proper life that you live in university as a musician. If I constantly just walked around feeling sorry for myself, I'm never going to get anything done. Uh, there was a bit of frustration in between all of that. I've been breaking my back for this company. Therapy is not for the weak or for the crazy. Stories from Africa. So my name is Max and I'm from Kenya. I uh, grew up in Mombasa, now living in Nairobi. Once I finished uh, campus, I went into, you know that you do internship when within school, so the school I went to, I went to Strathmore, so you had to do some like um, commercial, not commercial, like industrial attachment. So where I was working, I went, I got, I got a chance to go back after school, then I went, I moved to the parent company. So moving, let's say from a um, subsidiary, or it's almost like if you're in a branch from the smaller office to the HQ, there's all that, oh, oh and wonder even like i remember when i got my initial offer my boss at the time wanted to extend and give me like a contract then i told him oh i have another offer then when he had where i was going he's like ah you know what we can't even just go <laughs> <laughs> so that was um so coming even off of that like um it was a multinational an fmcg multinational so the i what people think about it, it was so wow you they think you roll around in money you know that there's not that separation from the company's pnl is not my bank statement so everyone thinks you're you know rich from day one but it was really nice. And even for ourselves, when we joined, I joined through a graduate program. So when we joined, I remember the first day when we were going for lunch. <laughs> so it was in Upper Hill. The office was in Upper Hill. So first we went and we just kept asking everyone, is this how you eat every day? So because they used to get catering like uh, from Tamarind. And it was like three cars, like everything, multiple desserts. I don't know. Like basically the buffet you get at our hotel every day at work so you know you think i could never get tired of this uh the, even the office they allowed they really had a very beautiful office so even when you walk in you just feel like ah oh, this is something else the how everyone carries themselves around a lot of expatriates so they even how people conducted themselves yeah it was just a bit awe uh, you were awestruck in the first uh, few weeks months and in all honesty it was a very good 
time. I stayed there for three and a half years. The usual, good boss, very good boss, good boss, horrible uh, <laughs> boss. <laughs> And then just um, from that, it was just that realization of once you start feeling like this is no, no longer the place I need to be at, like I'm not growing. And I know it's one of those cliche things to say, I'm not growing, I'm not growing. But it was more to the sense of there was the time I just started asking myself, you look and you see people who stayed in the company for uh, between maybe 12 years to 18 years, some to 25 and all. And staying in a company is not a bad thing. But for some of them, when you ask them why they'd stayed for so long, there'd be comments like, yeah, I've tried to leave, but no one ever gives me an offer that's as good as here. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's this benefit that this uh, company couldn't give me, so I stayed. So it was not, I'm happy, I'm thrilled, I'm all of this. It was, I am unable sometimes to move because of A, B, C, D. Uh, the entity used to have a lot of changes, right? Uh, so let's say, and changes can be many things. A different leader wants a different style, yeah. wants people, they like their own guard. So yeah. they remove the old guard and, and bring their own people. There's a bit of that. At times it's actual changes uh, that are validated. Um, so you knew it was a place that had a lot of traction. Uh, not traction, uh, churn. Like they used to churn a lot. Uh, so you start asking yourself, what does that then mean? I'm starting this my foundation, my foundational years of a career. I'm not about to retire, so I won't hang on in there uh, in a place where you're not happy. You have to be like, what do I really want for myself? And then also, what th what are the skills the industry requires? That's something else I was asking myself. So one day, <laughs> you know, they you go on LinkedIn. So they you go on LinkedIn in your country. Then I just you know. For the sake of instead of going to LinkedIn, London, a job in London, in New York, in uh, Seattle, you know, just different places. And I just started writing what are the skill sets they're asking for, what if it's in spirits. And then you said seeing even in different entities, there were certain core things everyone was asking, whether maybe it was in sales or it was in marketing or in finance, there were certain core things I was looking for. And I started asking myself, am I uh, carving myself out of the market. So, because each year maybe you have a good review, you performed well, your salary goes up. Already when you joined, you are like in them. I think they were, they were aiming between the 90th or the 95th percentile mm -hmm. in the job market. So they already recruited you well. So you didn't have. I didn't have that real process of. You've been an intern for forever and you're not really confirmed. I, I can say there was a lot of luck and stepping up at the right moments and all of those things. But you just notice, ah, I'm not. I'm not in the same struggles and okay, that sounds off, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you just start wondering, okay, if uh, it almost felt like I couldn't just walk out and apply for a job in Kenchik because mm. uh, they'd be like, excuse, why are you being paid like this and all of that? So it almost like the pool of places you could move to were limited. So if you look at what they're requiring, you start asking yourself, do I match up? And it was just like a really unnerving thing, but I'm happy I did it then when you had not as much to lose anyway so went through looked at the things they're asking for and just had that honest blunt conversation of how do i match up with other people yeah. and you look through and you're like the things are missing there are gaps and because of how they were structured it that just so happened to be the case so after that realization i knew like i had to leave had conversations like with my manager then a, a very br brilliant lady uh, so we just had that conversation. She's like, yeah, it's, it's good. You've realized that. And then just noticing their style. Well, if they didn't find a skill they wanted, they were very willing to poach and pay for it. Mm -hmm. So they weren't really interested as much in growing. So it mm -hmm. depended on who you had as your manager. And that's a game, you know, of chances. Um, and I remember that disorienting moment when that really great boss of mine left and almost felt orphaned and just realizing you can't blame someone for doing what is best for them. If yeah. anything, you're cheering them on you and you want them because you'd want them to want the same for you. Uh, realizing maybe, what does that mean? I can't rely on a manager to push my things ever. It should be more of how's the company structured, the culture, what are the prospects within? Because every time you have those career talks and you're like, oh, where do you see yourself in a year, yeah. in two to three years, in five years? And oh my God, I remember the first time I was asked that. And I was just like, babes, I just got here. I just finished school. Guys, where I see myself, is after my paycheck i don't see <laughs> that far i still don't even understand what this role does so those questions used to be so hard so <laughs> then you make the decision that okay i'm going to leave i would like to say yeah as soon as i knew i made the decision no it took a while it took um 
maybe a year or a year and a half in the initial stages i was like yeah uh, <laughs> i'm just going to take this other role that has come up and then i'll either be saving my money so that when i leave like blah 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 have a nest egg or I'll, I'll take this time to be applying but the thing with the rat race yes and i accept i'm in the rat race yeah. the thing with the rat race is you get so engrossed in it. You never get that time to step back. But if you're not working and slaving for the boss or the entity or whatever goal, get more money, get more volume, sell more units, blah, 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 beat the competition, gain share, whatever it is you're doing. Once you get home, you're so tired. You almost want now to amuse yourself. Yeah. So you want to binge on other mm-hmm. things. So you're like, oh, who has the energy to update their CV? Who? Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you see the post for the role, but you see it on the last day, mm-hmm. or you talk yourself out of it, or you're so busy you didn't realize how many passed you by. Mm-hmm. So it took a while. Yeah, it was just those, you're tired. You're almost like going through the motions. You're not yeah. giving your best. So it's not good for you. It's not good for the entity as well. So it took a while. Yeah. I would like to say it was easy, but it took a while. And then it wasn't those that I woke, woke up one morning and I was like, here's my letter. Nope. <laughs> um, there was a restructure that came up and they announced we're going to have a restructure. This is what's going to happen. I'd been saying the way, and for a while, I had been talking about the way I want to go do my master's. But it was almost a bit of a scapegoat mm-hmm. looking at it. Because I was like, why exactly do I want to do a master's? I wanted a break. I wanted an excuse to like, you know, just break and detach and yeah. come back. Um, and also wanted to leave abroad. And I just started asking myself, are there other ways to get those things? Other ways to get a break? Other ways to go leave abroad or get an experience somewhere else? Mm-hmm. And just trying... To, to, to really get to the bottom of why do I want to do this? Yeah. Not those generic answers you give like, uh, mm, <laughs> this is the right time. I don't have a family. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, the restructure came and I'd been saying, yeah, I want to either go back to school, blah, blah, blah. So the boss I had at that time, I just said, yeah, I, I'm hoping I'm impacted because me, I'd want, if I don't get another job in that period, I want to go back to school. And depending on the people in the business, that those I just told, I want to go back to school. Others like, I want to switch. Depending, you know, you don't tell everyone everything. So, and I think he thought maybe I wasn't too, what's the word? Like, you know, then maybe someone says, ah, me, I won't feel bad if this happens. Mm. Just to almost cushion themselves in case it happens. So the restructure happened. And I kept saying, if it happens, don't even, okay. I don't know if bosses fight for, you know, we, we would hope, we would <laughs> like to hope. But my comment was don't don't no no like don't bother or don't put yourself out there. Mm. I'm okay and this is actually the outcome I want. And I think for a couple of people they didn't think I was serious about it. Yeah. So it came, I was impacted, and I was like but then we had that conversation again. It's like, okay, you know, you kept saying it, but how do you feel now that it's actually yeah. happening? I was like, me, I'm happy. This is the best outcome for me. Because um, I was saying in such times of changes, also even how we look at change, for such changes I, I felt like not being not being affected by it, but the change happening around you is even worse because you get all the anxiety and then there's no motion for you after. Mm. So if you're impacted, either you move on and go to something else or in that whole commotion, you apply for something else and you get a promotion mm. or you move ahead. So it's like, if anything, I think being impacted can lead to growth for you. Mm. But me, I wanted out. So it happened. Um, there were some roles. They're like, oh, you should apply, you should apply. And the whole thing, I'm like, no, I'm not going to apply. What's the process for those of us who are not applying? Yeah. They're like, okay, you're going to get this package, blah, 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 blah. I was like, yeah, I'm going to take it. Of course, in that meantime, now you start applying outside the company. And that one, you're aggressively no shame. Yeah. Like, you don't even like to sneak out for an interview. Nope. <laughs> Tell your boss, I have an interview with this entity. I'll yeah. be back. I'll be here at this hour. It was a very interesting period. Like, you, you're literally handing over going for interviews, like preparing yeah. yourself for that. So it was a bit scary and liberating. And then it actually happens. Um, yeah. So I think the first month was very enjoyable. Because yeah. uh, first of all, you know you're going to have some income and you have already have those conversations for how long can this income last me, yeah. right? Uh, so in, see, if I don't get, if I get a job in this time, I'll have this and I'll use this for something else. Or this can last me maybe like a year if I use it well. Or... I, I, if I don't get a job by this point, I'll go back to school and blah, blah, blah. So those calculations. Yeah. So that first month was celebrating, like you're sleeping, you don't wake up to go anywhere, you're there on YouTube. Yeah, my job was just pleasure, <laughs> applications and interviews that first month. So if I'm not prepping for an interview or going for an interview, which doesn't take all that much time, mm-hmm. I just do stuff, YouTube, Nini. Of course, then also your friends think you're very idle, which can be true. Yeah. So you get a lot of, 
what are you doing? Like on a Thursday, you know that you have a random thing. Yeah. They're just like, I know you're not doing anything. Or I know you don't have work tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. So come, let's do this and that. So it, the first month was actually enjoyable. I'd say that. And then I think at that time, there were many interviews. Mm-hmm. So it happened at around September. I think, I think September was my last day. Um, sometime in September was my last day. So October... Uh, so there are still jo- uh, companies hiring, so they're posting, so lots of interviews, a lot of things happening, mm. blah, blah, blah. Colleagues still calling you, oh, is this, or is that? Mm. Or, oh, someone talked to me about a role, I've t- send them your CV, send me your CV, blah, blah, a lot of activity. Of course, the, the occasional uncles or aunts saying, so, so, unafanya nini? Eh? Uliacha kazi sasa unafanya nini? La, 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 and how could you even leave such a place? Blah, 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 blah. And, I don't know, you know, they, they uh, African relatives i feel like maybe sometimes the intention is good but how it comes across <laughs> you know even that whole period when i was telling my parents i want to leave my, my mom was like hi hi are you sure mm. my dad was like oh okay but uh, just think about it you know they, they don't tell you no yeah. but they're so anxious my relatives now who call you and they're like wow. or someone else calls and then they're like Nabado uko blah 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 ama walikuachilia I'm like, um, okay, I'm still there. I'm just having my last few days. And then I, so it was just, mm. and then that conflict of identity starts creeping in. Mm. Anyways, but that creeps in more like in November. So October was fun times, fun times. <laughs> Available for everything. Yeah. Midday, midweek drinks. Ah, <laughs> your girl hanging out. <laughs> Nini, I'm the one. Anyways, and then now, um, at near the end of October, um, actually, no, uh, beginning of November, I was just like, by the end of November, I need to have a job. Mm-hmm. I told myself that deadline. Hey, the anxiety now that started coming from that. I, I've not had a problem with insomnia. Like, there, there'll be few and far between, like, mm-hmm. the nights I struggle with that. But I used to wake up at 2 in the morning and I could not wow. go back to sleep because the thoughts... Mm. you're thinking oh okay what if this doesn't work out or this oh my god la la mm. and then before you just be like oh yeah i'm still working now in your interview now you have to disclaim oh no i'm no longer working how long so you keep working Ooh, what if my gap keeps getting larger and larger mm. so the anxiety really started you start doubting why, why you did what you did and then the identity issues i don't think we realize how much we i we Everyone just identifies with what they do. So the first thing is your name, because it's rude to ask your tribe. Uh, maybe if you're close enough and you're getting such data, you'd be like, oh, where do you live or something? But also that is seen almost like, are you trying to pima up people? So the one uh, people are very comfortable asking is, what do you do or where do you work? And then depending on the entity, there's a certain way, you know, yeah. it carries. So someone saying, I work at Huduma, um, or poster is different from someone telling you, oh, I work for the UN. Yeah. There's a weight, how people interact with you, the conversation, like there's yeah. this thing that comes. And when you say you're not employed, there is also <laughs> the all right brings. <laughs> what are you doing? Why, why did this happen? And no one thinks you can live somewhere out of choice. They mm-hmm. think if you're impacted by your structure, either you're incompetent, you had a fallout, mm-hmm. you know, it's never, oh, no, I branched off. It's like, mm, you just say you branched off, but did you really, <laughs> you you say you opted not to yeah. stay, but really, is it, there's always that, and then it starts chipping at you. Every time, anything, you um, you go to a family function, you're with your friends, and they're introducing you to other friends. Like, oh, this is my friend. She used to work. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, so what are you doing now? It's like, ah, ah. <laughs> like a gap period. <laughs> Since that point and moving on to other things, I've really just, it was just a point of what forms my identity. Mm-hmm. What, what, what am I allowing to define? And it's many things. And you keep hearing it, where you live, the car you drive, the place you work, and the, and the job you have there. There's mm-hmm. where you work and your title even yeah, there. Yeah? yeah? Because it frames even the conversation. So mm-hmm. if I say I'm a lawyer at Safaricom, people now want to come at me at telecoms yeah. and let's say d- data privacy. Yeah. It's it relates to what information now people want to give to you so you are unemployed what we talk about <laughs> and it also permeates to your relationships so at that point i wasn't dating someone so you're like going on dates and stuff ah, you know someone is almost like he <laughs> is she applying to be a kept woman what's the deal here and even sometimes when if it was off of the best intents like There'd be moments maybe you're like, okay, I have to leave or we can't meet or this time. It's like, why? You don't have work tomorrow? Why do you have to? We can't do this. He's just like, guys, 
if I say I need to, uh, we, we've been, we met at eight, it's now 10, let, let, let's go home. Yeah. And you're like, where are you rushing to? You don't have a job. I'm like, wow. Or maybe uh, there's a contribution and you contribute money. You almost see people are like, no, no. <laughs> and then that whole aspect of you, you are like, no, I'm fine. I can yeah. take care of this. And then everyone is just like, ah, or just tiptoeing around that yeah. whole issue of will she contribute as normal does she need to leave the channel <laughs> right so it has many things on identity so that period the second month had a lot of that mm. the identity the bit of change in dynamics um yeah or even things like you have a conversation then you're like there'll always be those hot topics or I think at that time there was this topic, I think, off in South Africa or somewhere about um, people getting a stipend from their boyfriend. So, you know, they, yeah. you're just talking about it. Then the guy was saying, why aren't you even really dating? Like, you know, you've been on a couple of dates and you're considering the fact. It's like, you know, I wouldn't mind. I don't mind doing that. I was like, so you, you're not, you can't separate. Is it because I'm unemployed? <laughs> or is it like they're normally like this? I have never had this dynamic. And then also coming from the point of just being dependent from like from my parents to taking care of myself there was no transit period i've never had to other than my parents like really ask anyone to do anything mm. so now that point where everyone is just like ah, it was an awkward place to be at so uh, like the one was saying about contribution so mm. someone has anything happy a bereavement yeah. a party i don't anything about it you you mm. do something and then they're like i know it means it, it's so it, it, this is the, the significance is a lot in your situation <laughs> <laughs> You can just say thank you and we move on. But they have to be like, yeah. And like, I was aware how much I gave. It wasn't yeah. like I wasn't present. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, so that November was like a bit hectic. Settling on something and think it's going to work out. Then that haggling process of packs and it didn't work out where I thought I was going to go. Mm -hmm. Then now where I am now came, came along and... Um, yeah, because after a while of people also saying, oh, no, that's too much. What you're asking for, it's too much. You start to doubt yourself. You're like, ah. Mm. So even you don't negotiate as fiercely. I feel like even when I was going initially, I was like, oh, yeah, if we do this and this, this percentage increase, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So we had that whole conversation. There was just something about most of my actual increments came from alliances I didn't previously have that now I have. And, and it's a good thing. And I'm happy if anyone ever finds out who I am and listens to this. I'm happy, guys. I'm good. I'm good. Not complaining. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, so even when they made the offer eventually, I didn't push back or negotiate or be like, no, could we adjust this? I was just like, yes, okay, okay. Because it was the first time someone was not telling me I'm too expensive. Yeah, so you yeah. just took it. And, and I think it's that period because you don't think about it, but you also start, it starts chipping at your confidence. It starts chip, chipping at your resilience to hang in there. So I was just like, yeah, yeah I'm good. The letter was like, okay, actually, you know, maybe uh, if you could add this and this. <laughs> yeah. Although what I would want to say is, this is not a call out to everyone. Go after it, resign, quit mm. your jobs. And I'll be like, listen, you know, they, they say, listen to the, the um, almost not really the rhythm of, of your heart. No, they say, go get into the room and read the room. Yeah. Keep reading the room and yourself. Just keep checking the two tempos. If there's a disconnect, start looking to how, what am I going to do about it? Is it me who's going to change? Am I going to try and make them change? Am I going to move to something else? Mm. So start noticing that. And then once you notice it, start planning. Mm. So that whatever outcome, you already started psychologically preparing yourself. Because mm. all of these things are losing the job. It's the other things, the income your social standing your identity mm -hmm. all of that the gap in your car in your career what will you do to fill that time because mm -hmm. idleness is also a bad thing yeah. everyone else has, 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 is at work and you're sharing memes eh? it's not productive so prepare yourself mentally for what does that really mean mm -hmm. keep checking is that the right thing then start making a plan towards it so i'd still do it but my comment is plan plan think it through take your time sometimes you don't do it the moment it occurs you, you do it after you've prepared for it yeah. um because if if the first time it crossed my mind i did it there i wouldn't have been as prepared because in that period after you were doing things to raise your base pay so wherever you're going you'll be happy with what they give yeah. you you're getting additional skills you every time you're connecting to people who've gone to other companies asking how they are mm -hmm. seeking opportunities watching the job market and seeing what skills they need and at work making sure you get them so i'd still do it and but i would not miss the preparation stage mm -hmm. i was watching something yeah i was watching something someone who's traveling and she was saying travel is not the solution many yeah. people are having a bad time at work and you think the solution is the vacation i'm going to go to and i'm going to reset it's it's 
part of the solution, but it's not the full solution. Even switching a job is not the full solution. It's not the solution to all the issues. It's wherever you're going to go, some of the issues you face, you will still face them there. Some of the dissatisfaction you have with the day-to-day -day mundane tax tasks will still exist. Mm -hmm. So knowing also, I take the leap, but what I tell myself is it's not the solution. It's not the full solution. It's part of it. There'll still be work to do after. There'll still be anxiety. There'll still be dissatisfaction, but you make it better and you know this environment is much better than the previous one. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying... And I'm an extrovert, so it doesn't work out most of the time. But trying, as I introduce myself, as I have interactions with people, to be me. Dis uh, distancing yourself, not to be... <laughs> let it not be Max is at the police force and everything around that. It will come up in conversations and all, but not letting people have that as my full identity. Seeing people even how they save you on the phone. You know, mm. the people will be like, Max Butchery, Max... Uh, KNH yeah. and you don't realize it but that becomes you and what are you without that mm. so where it's not necessary trying not to introduce uh, that angle not because you're ashamed of any or anything but just knowing th is this really forming me and will it lead to uh, further attachments so there's that another thing is also just knowing that uh, and I know it sounds like those quotes um, you're still the same person as intelligent as smart as worthy of conversation as worthy of engagement as everything else with or without certain titles so those material things and all of that and even interacting now with new people you're no longer like oh they're in google they're in microsoft they're in oracle wow and then when someone else says i mean but now let me think of something else view sasa and the you know uh, no, no problems to you, Sasa. Or uh, Inoro. Like, are you treating the person who tells you I'm this and this from BBC and I'm this and this from Inoro? Just always checking myself. And am I giving... And it's, it's a continuous process. It's a bit difficult because it's a lot of conditioning. So it's checking my identity and checking how people's identities influence mm. how I interact with them. And let me tell you, with relatives, it's the worst. Mm. You see how they do it. You see how when you go up country, the the, the airs people take on or the mm. credentials are given. Ah, wakili. Ah, daktari. And every person, like, you stand up and that daktari cannot be forgotten. Mm. How much is it that attached to you? If your license was taken away, who are you mm. without that? Um, so, yeah, how I identify, how I identify with others. Um, I'd say being very keen on just having an ear for the market mm -hmm. is something I'd ask. Like, how are things evolving? How are things changing? So you don't get so grossed up. Uh, and gross, sorry. In, most people are, are engrossed in ask kissing with the, uh, the, the, the boss and getting to the next mm -hmm. role and, oh, what are my networks and what, what, what. That you're, you're forgetting to listen to what's happening in the external environment, yeah. what's going on. Because... Are you just set up to succeed where you are or are you set up to succeed even in many other places? Catch our next African stories in the next episode. Thank you, Max, for sharing your story on 100 African Stories. Remember, you can follow this podcast on Instagram. Just search for Legally Clueless Podcast. And there's a new episode every single Monday. So you can subscribe to the podcast either on CastBox. You can catch us on SoundCloud, on my website, which is adelonyango.com, or on Apple Podcasts. See you next week, Monday. Oh, wait, I can't see you. It's a podcast. Hear me next week, Monday. <laughs> and that's it for this episode of Legally Clueless. You can share this podcast with your friends. You can keep it for yourself. I'm not judging. Just make sure you're here next week for the next episode.